Hi, I'm Na and I'm here with Rob. And how are you? I'm fine, how are you? I'm great. When, where and why was the first time you felt that love don't live here anymore? Uh, love don't live here anymore? Uh, Rose Royce was a like an R&B singer-songwriter, whatever, from the 60s, 70s, I think little 80s. And one of her main hits was Love Don't Live Here Anymore. Um, and ever since I was a kid, I loved the song. I don't even know where the first time I heard it was. Maybe like my, one of my parents or something, I don't know. But ever since I was a kid, I loved the song. Uh, it's super catchy, it's a beautiful song, but it's also really depressing. And I just thought it was a cool mix. Um, when I started writing this album, it's a pretty dark album. Um, and I th I just thought it was a cool connection and I kind of wanted to like pay homage or something to another musician that I liked. So that's kind of how I put it together. And that was the first time that I really ever thought about it. So this is your farewell tour, um, but this is the first time you were in Belgrade. Do you have any expectations from tonight? Honestly, no. We're just excited to be here. I mean, we've come as far as uh, Croatia, but we've never gone below that. So everybody's really excited about hitting uh, Serbia today. And then we got two Greece shows and then uh, Bulgaria. So all four of those are all new for us. So we're all really stoked about it. Yeah, everybody seems to be excited about it. And that's what the promoter's saying is everybody's saying. But I had no idea if we were going to play for like 10 kids or if we were going to play for a million. There's but. already 10 kids outside. So. Hey, well, then I'm already up. So good. <laughs> all right. In one of the most popular of your songs, Love Don't Live Here Anymore, you say, is this really who I am? Is this what I've become? Uh, what was the last time you asked yourself these questions? Um, I think it varies. You know, some people, sometimes you have bad weeks and you ask it every day. Sometimes you have good months and maybe you only ask it once a day. So for me, it changes too. You know, you have good periods and bad periods, so it's kind of hard to say. If you had to represent your band with one song to one person, what song would that be? And would it be like one of the most recent songs or one of your personal favorites? Not of our own songs, of a different it song? It could be either different or your own, whatever you want. For a different song, I would say Troubadour by George Strait. Uh, myself, my little brother Jay who plays drums, and Ricky, our bass player, just love that song. We've listened to it all tour. Um, George Strait's like an old school country dude, just badass songwriter. And Troubadour is just kind of his story of coming in and playing music and eventually going out. He just retired, so right. it's just kind of a cool. You relate. To yeah, we can all relate to it. It's like a it's a moving song. It's a cool song. And uh, if I was gonna send a send a song out to my boys, that's what it would be. What was the song or an album that changed the way you perceive music? Outlaw Anthems by Blood for Blood and The Great Southern Trend Kill by Pantera and Ride the Lightning by Metallica. Those would be my top three. When you guys started in 2004, did you expect to get where you are today and do you have any advices for young bands? Um, I think we wanted to get where we are today, but we didn't necessarily expect it. I mean, we were just a bunch of dumb kids like copying off Hatebreed, playing music in our living room, you know? Um, but. I feel lucky and blessed, you know, right. in the words of DJ Khaled, that we get to do all this shit. It's crazy, you know? I think for a local band just like us, just like we were, it's half luck and half hard work and you gotta be willing to eat shit, you know? We've been touring relentlessly for maybe eight years. It's really only been like the past two years that have actually been awesome. Like all the other ones were just, we're scraping by, you know? Okay, so why end it now? Because everybody, uh, you know, you're at a certain age where, like, some of us have families, all of us have careers, and you just get to the point where you can't really juggle both. And I don't want either to have to sacrifice. So if we can't give 100% to the band, it's just not worth doing at all, you know? I think we, we lived our dream and we lived it for a long time. And we got to do a lot of really cool stuff. I'm in fucking Serbia right now, it's crazy. Um, but it's only one chapter, and everybody has other things that they want to do, so right now it's just time to focus on some other stuff. Right. What was the most uncomfortable situation you had on tour? Yeah, so the other night we were in fucking Poland, and uh, it was like 3 a.m., and it was after the show, and I was checking in by myself, because the other guys were still like doing their thing, I don't know what they were doing, um, and at the venue, but 
<clears throat> our tour manager had checked into the hotel previously and gotten us the keys, right? But I get maybe he didn't give them my name or something got lost in translation. Either way, I had my key, but the lady at reception just was very stressed out about me being in the hotel. Like I went to the elevator, it was going up. So she followed me because she didn't think that I should be there. I don't know, maybe it was tattoos. I have no idea, but she wasn't having it. So it followed me all the way up, yelling at me the entire time. It was crazy. I kept telling her like, yo, I have the card. Call your manager, check my name, blah, 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 you know? She was just yelling at me in Polish and stuff. Okay. And then uh, I go in my room. She comes in my room and was still yelling at me. And I kept telling her, hey, this is my room. This is my hotel. All I want to do is take a shower and go to bed because it's 3 a.m., you know what I mean? Like, please give me a break. It wasn't having it. I kept telling her, just call your manager, call your manager. And she was yelling at me. So I said, fine, taking a shower. Took off all my clothes and <laughs> went took a shower. And she left. I didn't hear from her again, so I guess she called the manager, I don't know. Yeah. Or maybe she just didn't want to deal with it anymore. Or she saw you naked and just ran away. Yeah, she was not happy about that at all, but <laughs> I told her, literally, I am just here to take a shower, yeah. so, you know, if you want to stay here and be crazy with me, right. that's fine, but I still need to take a shower, and so, you know, you're either here for that or you're not. That's your choice, I don't know, but I'm taking a shower. Right. What would you consider necessary for a weak local scene to be, become stronger and what is it that unites people in one scene? Local bands would be my answer for both those questions. I think that it's not even about having like promoters that put on hella shows and stuff. It's, I think it's, there's more power in a strong scene with good local bands that actually care, you know, because they can end up putting on shows themselves. But, but what if the bands aren't enough? Then it cycles out. Sometimes it's not. There's plenty of scenes that have fallen apart because it wasn't enough. But I think eventually it becomes enough again, you know, once new bands and new blood. I think a lot of times when it dies, it's because there aren't new bands. There's just the same bands that have been there for three or four years. And then the people that were listening to them move on and go to college and get jobs and stuff. And there's not other people coming up and making music. So I think you always need like a re-emergence of talent and new bands to keep people excited about it and to keep bringing new people in. I think that's the most important thing. Uh, what would make a crowd at a show a bad crowd in your opinion? Mm -hmm. I don't really know if there is one. I mean, I guess if they came to the show and they just didn't want to be there, that would be a bad crowd, but then they'd also be idiots for paying for a show they didn't want to be at, so I don't know. That's their problem, I guess, but I think, just like we were talking about before, I think everybody kind of reacts differently, and it depends on where you are. You know, like some scenes are super mosh-oriented. Some just want to sing along. Some are stage diving the whole time. Some, there's a mix of it, and sometimes, People just want to hang out and drink beer and nod their head and have a good time if it's a little bit of an older scene, you know? Right. So I think you just need to be able, to, you just need to know who you're playing for right. before you can judge it, you know? Right. Do you feel relieved on stage uh, or the emotions from the lyrics come back when you sing them? No, um, not so much on stage. When I, I feel that when I first write the songs and then record them. You know, right. that process is when I get that type of satisfaction and kind of relive that emotional connection or whatever. And when I first get the album back and I can listen to it, that's when I'm like, yeah, I can feel this, obviously, you know. Uh, but when we're actually on stage, then I'm kind of in a different zone and the lyrics are coming out as like a muscle memory thing. I don't always right, right. <clears throat> even know what I'm doing. And I'm just there kind of grooving, having a good time, partying with my friends, you know. So that's a diff totally different type of satisfaction. Okay. If it really is the truth that there is one life and one pain, what would be, metaphorically, the painkillers? Music. It's always been music for me. Uh, ever since I was a kid, that's kind of what's gotten me through okay. all the rough moments, you know? It's always been that, so I would say music. <laughs>